Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Our scenario is called Recovery Mission DG4523, and it was written by Tyler Hudak. This is episode two, and our recap will be given by, by Vasil Kizhniak. The agents of Delta Green have been alerted. The players are ready. Let's begin our journey into the darkness. Позывной Ясин для 1107 Гнездо. Обнаружен следовной из черный пикон. Возможно, их там несколько. Отправляюсь на место встречи. Конец связи. Office action report for Operation Recovery Mission. Seven of us arrived for a briefing. We got the mission to find a reclaim an occult artifact. No, looked like a like a Russian Orthodox icon, which could be used to conduct Rasputin spirits. Possible locations, Half Moon City Post Office, Postbox. As we get to House Moon Post Office, there are strange condition with its workers. They look like working for a few shifts along, or maybe have some kind of nightmares, and they look quite strange, as my colleagues told me. During the check of the post box, we find out that it's where entry. Using our fake post office inspector's IDs, we check all the leads and uh, cam tapes, which find out that one of the <coughs> Post workers who were absent today, Mr. Harold checked it before us, so maybe he took it out. We get a two new leads, Harold's apartment and Benjamin's house apartment, who is the personal receivers. As we get to the this condition, we find out it's much more useful to split up to cover both of locations. So I and my part of group get into the Harold's apartment. As we get inside, clearly there was no one inside. We search it down, find some strange, maybe occult stuff. Uh, his colleagues' pictures with a marking on their faces made by himself. There was a lot of empty parcels in his house. Possible he stole it from post office too. So as we keep on going, installed uh, his, there was installed a police band radio in his apartment. And it shouted. It uh, shouted to us that the, from police band there is some kind of shotgun shot out in the post office. In the same time, due by our comlin, we get an information that something attacked our colleagues in other department, in other part of the city. And we have to make a hard decision: get faster to the post office to see what's happened there, or help our colleagues. Agent out. Okay. Okay. When we last left off, we were split into, or you were split into two teams. So let's call them Team A and Team B. One team had gone to go to Benjamin Hale's house uh, or apartment, excuse me, uh, in order to try to get his uh, to see if he had the the artifact, the, the Russian artifact that you were looking for. Team B went to. Uh, the other house uh, to Harold Nixon's house uh, to see if he had it. Uh, when we last left, Team A uh, was running out of Benjamin Hale's apartment, pursued by this black amorphous slime uh, creature that was chasing them. And Team B overheard on the radio that the there were gunshots at the local post office, and then you heard all these screams coming from your fellow uh, agents uh, in Benjamin Hale's house. So, uh, d we'll start back up at uh, Benjamin. Actually, let's start with Team B, who, who's at uh, Harold Nixon's house. Uh, you hear this over the radio. There are screams from your fellow agents yelling to get out, get out, as they're chased by something. Uh, you hear gunshots, and then you also hear the, uh, the police band radio that's in the, the room with you stating that there are gunshots at the post office. What are you guys doing? I think I'm going to run to our car and shout everyone that we should help our colleagues in Team A get there as fast as possible. Yeah, we'll have to uh, let the police deal with uh, the situation at the post office. We could always join us to a post office situation, but I think at current moment our agency is the first. 
All right, so we're uh, headed over there quickly as we can. Okay. Um, okay. There's no agents at the post office, though, right? Correct. You're, talking yeah. about you're headed over to the apartments? Correct. Yes. We're at? Okay. Uh, do you say this on the radio? I think yes. I can okay. to use it. Really then I'm, I'm, I'm just as I'm running, I'm going to be like, uh, be back at the rally point. Seems impervious to uh, firearms. Okay. <clears throat> and I just got physically injured in the back of my leg. So. Right. Uh, so um, one, one thing that I forgot about last time, I know some of you are wearing armor. When we're doing damage, if you're wearing armor, let me know um, so we can, and I will tell you if it uh, if it's affected by not. I think we forgot to do that last time. Uh, but it wouldn't have uh, affected uh, Ty in any way. No. Um, so Team B, you uh, run out, you get into your vehicle, start speeding towards the apartments. Even going at top speed, it's going to take you about 10 minutes to get there. Uh, who is driving? I believe we were in my car. Okay. All right, so you, I'm you preparing to air pumps in car so I can drive. Okay. So you, you jump in, uh, speed off. Team A, you're running out of the apartment uh, into the, the hallway. If you recall, the hallway is kind of in an L-shaped. Uh, you're in the far end of the L. Uh, you have to go down the hall, make a left, uh, and go down the hall again. If you want to go to the elevators, and then there are stairways uh, down at that end. If you go out into the hall and then turn to the right, there will be, at the end of the hall, as another set of stairways. But this thing is right behind you. Well, then, how badly am I injured? Uh, I, you're you're uh, not um, injured enough that you're slowing down or anything like that. You have adrenaline pumping through you. Uh, if I remember right, you didn't take that much damage, right? Right, just just right. to the back of my leg. Yeah, so so I mean, it, you're gonna feel it uh, at some point, uh, but with the adrenaline pumping, you're able to to keep going uh, at the moment. Okay, I as sure. we're running, I yell stairs, stairs. Yeah. Because I don't want to be trapped in a box. Yeah. We're on it. Is there any way where, um, do they have like fire doors at any of the stairwells or are they just open? Yeah, they're fire doors. If we make it to one of the fire doors in time, we'll get through. I'm going to just uh, like uh, try and jam like my, my knife underneath as like a doorstop almost just to kind of try and bias a couple seconds as to get the door closed, get everybody, you know, get the door closed and then jam some, jam a, uh, something underneath the door to jam it closed. Okay. So, uh, so I remember right, uh, at the apartment is Brock, Agent Ty, and, and who else? My, myself, John D. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, so you, you run out into the hallway, you, uh, turn the corner as you get out into the hallway, uh, you probably have, a good 15, 20 feet in order to run to make it to the doorway. The creature comes crashing out right, uh, uh, right behind you. Um, so we'll say that you guys get uh, about five, uh, 10 feet down the hallway, about halfway, and the creature is right behind you. Are you guys doing anything, or are you just going to continue? So it's gaining speed. Uh, it's keeping up with you fairly easily. Uh, it's almost right on top of you. Are there windows? There's a window at the very far end of the hallway where like the, the, the hallway ends uh, to the right is the door. If you go, if you would continue to go straight uh, through the building wall, there's a, a, a window right there overlooking the parking lot. I, I can it's remember. The second or, floor? Or, yeah. Uh, no, you guys are on like the uh, seventh floor. Oh, fuck that then. All right. <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the, way that it's moving, the way that it's moving doesn't seem like there's anything that we can do other than run. Yeah, and try to keep ahead of it. Hopefully, the person who's in the back, who's the closest, it's probably me because I'm injured. Well, I, I that's, scream that's a war cry. That's how you got injured. Where you you were behind us. That's how you got attacked, and the rest of us did it. All right, so I am. I'm the closest to the creature. Um, so if it grabs me, then that'll give you a chance to get away. But I'm going to try to get away from it. Okay, have, uh, just go, 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 go. Yeah, I, I'm gonna try the fire door. You know, hopefully we make it to the fire door and I, I, I can uh, get it closed. 
Okay. So you, you run down, the, the creature gets out into the hallway. It's right behind you. It shoots out one of its uh, like almost tentacle-like slime uh, pieces from itself, uh, heading towards uh, Agent D. Um, you can either dodge, uh, but that will be your... Uh, that will be your action for for the round. You won't be able to uh, uh, attack if you choose to. Uh, no, I'm happy to try and dodge. And I failed. Okay. Uh, so the 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 slime uh, tentacle kind of reaches out, uh, hits you uh, for three points of damage uh, as it wraps around your arm. Uh, and kind of, you feel it almost start to slice into your arm. Uh, it feels very sharp and almost like there are uh, needles inside of it uh, that are, are causing this damage for you. But it rips away and uh, pulls back. Is there any As, fire extinguishers in this hall? Uh, give me a luck roll. We'll see if there's one by you. Luck is 50%. Or even a fire hose. I got a 23. So. All right, yep, there are fire... There's a fire extinguisher. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna grab one. He's, he's, I'm gonna grab one and try and spray it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, firearms roll or whatever the equivalent of that is. Yeah, nailed it. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do. Uh, give me a d6 for damage. Five. Okay, the, you spray the, uh, the fire extinguisher at the creature, and it, that does actually seem to affect it. You don't know if it's the cold. <clears throat> you don't know if it's the chemicals within inside the fire extinguisher, but that seems to do it. Uh, as soon as you do that, uh, the rest of you uh, continuing to run, Benjamin Hale steps out into the hallway as well. Uh, gun in hand, uh, screams at you, give me back my packages, uh, and uh, let's uh, loose. Uh, he shoots at uh, Agent D again. Uh, the first shot uh, misses, and the second shot misses as well. Thank bullets you. are going, bullets are going flying by. One hits the window, explodes it out. Uh, as this is going, uh, Deep Blue, you are uh, hearing all of this as well over the, the computer uh, headset. Uh, in addition, you've uh, tapped into the tapped into the um, uh, police van, and so you're hearing everything that's going down at the, the post office, and you just hear uh, talk of gunfire in the post office, two police cars have arrived, and they're getting ready to breach the, the post office. Uh, okay, so I... Go on. I will tell them that information to Okay. Then. Okay. Uh, you all hear this over the radio. Uh, Team B, as you're you're going through, uh, is there anything that you want to communicate back to Deep Blue or the rest of the team? I wonder if there's a way that Deep Blue can send information to the police, since we know who the the shooter likely is, even though we we can't be there to help. Uh, maybe he can convey some. Uh, can you, Deep Blue, convey some kind of information uh, on who the shooter is to the police? Oh, like a tip. Like a, like the hot, yeah. like a tip hotline. Yeah, just so they know what they're kind of walking into. Uh, you know, a disgruntled employee. Well, I could do. I could try that. Oh, sure. Uh, how are you going to do that? Um. Well, I maybe, have, maybe, uh, an, maybe an encrypted phone line to dispatch or oh, something like that. Just. Well, I was what I was thinking was I was yeah I was gonna like call the uh, hotline and I'm like I or like the or even like the police state or even like the police you know not nine one one but the you know every every police station has a separate number that's not for right. like non emergencies right I'm just gonna basically and make sure there's no I think I'm gonna okay. have here in this uh, 
uh, this is a I give the description of this. Okay, oh, you're, well, break, you're breaking up. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're breaking up pretty. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That was me. Yeah. Could, <clears throat> okay, so. Any of that. Well, uh, let's do this. Yeah, you start making the call. It starts ringing. Uh, as this is happening, back to Team A. You uh, get to the door. Uh, it sounds like uh, Brock is leading uh, the pack. Uh, Brock, you get to the door first, uh, followed by Agent D, followed by Agent Ty. Uh, get to the door, get through it, uh, and there's a stairwell uh, in there. Okay, I'm 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 yelling over the comm link to Team. Are we A or B? We're A, right? You're A. I'm I'm yelling over the comm link to Team B. Uh, something to the effect of we have a dark unicorn. <laughs> And it's playing with us some sort of code so that nobody knows except us what we're talking about. Some sort of monster is attacking us, but I don't say that. Okay. Ty's going insane. I knew it was going to be him. Yeah, we're just screaming for no reason. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and jam up the door. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's cool. I'm just going to scream. This guy is really angry about his post being delivered or not being delivered. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, um, I'm, I'm also going to shoot at uh, the guy. The water thing? No, the guy who's shooting at us. All right, so you, oh. you're, in, you're in the, uh, the, like, the oh, stairwell. Right. Right. Yeah, you're going to have to kind of... Yeah, get past Brock, who's shutting the door, and then you know, no, that's into cool. there. Yeah, okay. I, I forgot that we'd gotten through the door. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Brock, uh, you're trying to uh, jam it up. Uh, give me a uh, some type of roll. Uh, let me see here. Give me a... Well, I got a 32. All right, that'll work. Uh, you, you do find something, you're able to jam it in there, uh, something into the door to, to prevent it from being open, and as soon as you do, that thing just slams into the door, uh, kind of pushing it back. You can see that the it hit it with such force that the, the hinges have started to buckle a little bit and the door bending inwards. Uh, as this happens, uh, Team B, uh, you're, you've made it into your car, you're heading out, you're speeding on. Who's driving again? All of it's driving. Okay, give me a uh, dr give me a drive roll. Pass. Okay, you pull out into traffic and you start going down. The roads, fortunately for you, are not that busy at this time of day. It's still, if I remember right, it's still mid morning, <clears throat> and so you're able to you know get. Uh, about a quarter of the way there uh, without issues. Uh, Deep Blue, back to you. Right, so you, you call up the police station. Uh, somebody answers up, uh, hello, uh, police, can I help you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, great. I hope you can hear me better now. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I basically say, yeah, I am one of the residents at the uh, exact <clears throat> address of this. Place. Say that again. What's the exact address of this place? Because I'm gonna make. Hi, I'm the I'm the resident. I'm a resident at of the hotel that you're in. And I hear gunshots, and I think, and the guy who's shooting is right outside my uh, door. Oh, uh, they, they say. Uh, so you uh, you're you're talking. So you're talking about the apartments, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, they say, All right, oh, well, thank you, sir. Um, we'll, we'll patch you, uh, we'll, we'll patch that information over to the authorities. Uh, they're, uh, kind of busy right now, but as soon as we can get a squad car over, we will. And, and I'm sorry, what was, what was your name again? I just give like a, uh, I just give like a generic kind of. Okay. Uh, I give. Give me a computer use roll. Okay. 
Yeah, I passed at 19. Okay, so you were able to make sure that the, the call routing software that you were using to hide your true uh, location uh, works okay, uh, there aren't any glitches, and so they, you know, they take down the information and they say that they'll, start, they'll send a, a car over as soon as they can. Back to team. Thank, thank, I say thank you, and I hang up. Yes. Uh, back to uh, team A. Uh, you, uh, you're in the stairwell. The door is shut. The thing is banging on it from the other side. We're uh, as we're oh, running. Yes. We tell Brock, "Come on!" We're, as we're running down, we grab fire extinguishers in the stairwell and we just start spraying them behind us. Hopefully, it'll cool everything off and the thing won't like it. Okay. What time of year is it? Is it winter? No, no, it's uh, fall. Okay. This time of year, like it is right now. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you, you're running down, you, you're spraying as you go. Uh, at, you get about halfway down the, the stairs, and you hear the door above just explode out. And then you hear this. Actually, everybody give me a sanity check. Okay. Everybody who's there, that is. 27. Yeah, easy. Okay, so if you made made it, you don't lose anything. Uh, if you failed it, uh, lose one because there's uh, ear piercing noise, almost like this otherworldly scream comes echoing down the hall or the, the the fire escape or not fire escape the the stairwell that you're in as this creature starts to try to go down the the stairs and hits uh, the the spray that you all have sprayed as you've gone down. You get to the bottom of the, the stairway, uh, run out, uh, you're in the, uh, it leads into the lobby. All right, we just fucking head right to the car. Okay, everybody uh, give me listen rolls. Um, Who's there? I think I'm gonna, are there other people in this hotel? I think we should pull the fire extinguisher. I'll get everybody out. Apartment? Yeah, oh yeah, there's, it's an apartment building. It's, uh, there's, Probably, if you would estimate it, there's a couple hundred people living there. Okay, so I yell over at the concierge as we pull down, as we just grab the no, fire. There's no, yeah, there's no concierge. Yeah, there's no show. Oh, okay. And I just, I'm just like, fire, 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 and I pull the thing so that people... Know. Okay, so you pull that as you're running out. Uh, as you do that, uh, get, uh, all three of you that are there, give me a uh, listen roll at minus 30%. So in other words, take your listen, track 30%. And got a 13. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I have a good listen, so I think uh, I might be screwed. So you're making a better <clears throat> roll for us, yes? No, no, I'm making it worse. And we'd add so, so 10% to it. Well, add 30, either add 30% to your roll or take 30% away from your skill. I see. Yeah. Did anybody yeah. make it? Uh, I can't find my listen on this. Is it? Yeah, I can't find my listen either. It's, That's what it's, I'm... it's alertness. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, alertness. Yeah. Uh, that I'm I, excellent at. I, I made it exactly. Yeah, yeah, I made mine no problem. Okay, so for those who make it, as after Agent Ty pulls the fire extinguisher and the alarms just start going off, you start to head out the door and you hear this ding as the elevator reaches the bottom and starts. it begins to open up. You oh, man. Turn around, and in there is uh, Nathan uh, or Benjamin Hale standing there, gun pointed right at you. Can I try and take a shot? I got my gun out. Uh, you can't. What's uh, what are all of your dexes? Uh, dexterity 55 50%. 60. Okay, yeah, you can all go first. Brock, you can uh, go first. Okay. So you see him, he's standing there right in the, uh, the elevator, pointing right at you. I, 31, I nailed him, I got an 80, so that's <clears> less <throat> than half. I don't know okay. if that matters. Can we roll damage? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I only get this one shot, this isn't like, a, it's a one big bullet, essentially. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is 8 plus 3, 11 hit points of damage. So you just completely nail him, um, uh, knock, knocking him back. He falls to the ground, barely breathing, but still with enough to raise up his gun uh, and point it at. He gets to go next. 
he will point it at uh, Agent D. You're just the unlucky one right now. You are not. Yeah. Nobody oh, likes you, dude. You're really unlucky. Uh, as he rolled a six and uh, oh, shoots man. you for five points of damage. The the bullet. Oh, actually, do you have armor on? No. No. All right. So five points of damage as it uh, hits you right in the shoulder. Uh, I'm on. I'm on one point of health okay. left. Okay. We'll get you out of here, buddy. Just get to the car. Uh, but but uh, Agent D and uh, Agent Todd, you guys get to go next if you would like. You can continue to run, or you can uh, fire back. Um, is, is there anywhere I can kind of dive to cover? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I just you're, you're kind of like cover. on the okay, you're kind of like on the cusp of the outside, so you're able to just kind of dive to the side of the building where he, he has okay. no way to see you. Uh, Agent Ty, what are you doing? I'm gonna dive at him and see if I can grapple him and knock the gun down and. Yeah. Because we got to get some answers. Sure. I mean, you're gonna have uh, you can, you're gonna have to run back into the elevator to do that if you want, but uh, you can definitely do that. Well, I think it's important that we get something out of this guy. So, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll. Sorry. Uh, Thirty-one. Uh, what am I looking for? This is kick his ass. I got you covered. Uh, that would be is there like a brawling or. Hand to hand. Yeah, there's a melee, I think. A melee, that'll work. Why don't I see that? Oh, there it is. Um, oh, no, yeah, I mean, I, I got it. I got that out of 50. Nice. I got 31. Okay. Yeah, even even with Arnold Combat, combat, you would have gotten it. So, yeah, you, you are able to get to him. Uh, he's just kind of lying there weakly, just blood just pouring out of uh, the wound. Uh, and you're able to do what? What are you doing? Um, I think I'm going to try to drag him out. Drag him out. Get his fucking gun first. Okay. I, I know. I've, I've got his gun out. Right, yeah, you, you grab his gun or knock it away, and you just start dragging him out. He's, uh, you know, kind of coughing up blood as you do. Um, uh, has anybody else uh, uh, come into the hallway where we are? Uh, your tenants. You're starting to hear people come down. The there's no uh, apartments on the first floor. It's just mostly off an office and like the. Okay. Uh, uh, other things that would be in a, an apartment building, uh, but you're starting to hear people start to run down the the, the stairs. Okay, as soon as actually, you're, you're started, actually starting to hear some screaming as well from the stairs. Okay, as yeah. uh, you are giving the, the the creature a lot of different um, snacks at the moment. Um, I I was just saying that if somebody comes down the stairs and sees us, I'm going to yell federal agents, and uh, but we're I, I'm going to drag this guy out. Okay. Yeah, I pop uh, you, start, <laughs> you start dragging him out. Are you taking him to the car? Is that what you're? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Can we, uh, uh, if, if we get him to the car and he survives getting to the car, um, we want to restrain him and uh, patch him up so that he's at least stabilized. Okay, Don't you you, you get him to the car uh, without a problem. Uh, he's he's still uh, alive. He's. You know, coughing up blood, bleeding everywhere still. People are starting to come out of the building now. All right. Oh, close the trunk then. Yeah. Well, I got him in the back. Back seat's better because we could talk to him. Okay. So you okay. throw him into the back seat. You guys jump in the car. Team B, you're just racing across town. You kind of get to the point now where you're pretty close to the post office. So you can either choose to go to the post office or you can choose to go to where Team A is. We got all the information that say uh, all okay and they escape the building. Yeah, you're you're getting this uh, kind of fed in real time. And we're 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 keeping Team B posted as to what's going on. Well, we can hear everything through the, if we're if we have a mm -hmm. con <clears throat> here. We're hearing a, a, a firefight. We're hearing the creature. Um, I have sensible reason to. You know that what's happening at the post office is mostly at this point a, a civilian matter. Um, if there's some kind of creature on the loose, then you know, like I think our our, our top priority should be to to put down and contain the, the the supernatural threat. Well, and I think that at this point we need to also tell Deep Blue to uh, to radio back to Alpha and yeah. tell them that we have a serious uh, serious breach, all in code, of course. Yeah. 
the butterflies are yeah. flying through the countryside. And, uh, <laughs> Plus, there's a lot of civilian, you know, possibly right. civilian casualties happening at the apartment building. I, I, I can't think of any tactical reason we would we would divert to the post office. Can you guys? I agree with Agent Olives that uh, we have to go get to those our team, team A. Okay. okay. As yeah. As we did beforehand. Well, you also know that Team A is leaving the building, so. So we'll cover your tail for any reason. It, it, now, are you, are you you're leaving the building with with hail, but you're leaving the creature inside, right? That's yeah. correct. Yes. We can't do anything about that, but uh, I'm sure it'll all the, the 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 Delta Green will make it all look like some sort of an industrial accident. But we got to find out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> so I, th I think right now, then our our our, our top priority uh, for our team should be to lend an assist, uh, find out how badly wounded the team is, and try and kind of sink. Secure the site. Okay. Uh, I can make and to try to make some kind of blow up the gas filled building or feed it. Agent Hammer, what do you think? Avoid it. Yeah, I'm concerned out. about leaving that creature. I mean, was, that's our job to take care of that thing, right? We've got to get this asshole out of here so we can uh, question him. Well, it's, it's correct that it is our job, except that we don't know what we can do. At the moment, we're stuck. And we can't let anybody catch. We can't let anybody know about Delta Green either. So. Let's as we get to this building, uh, we'll try to find a way to blow it up or block somehow that this creature didn't get out. Yeah, I mean, short of uh, Delta Green calling it a drone strike, it's kind of all on us right now, right? Well, maybe you, that's a good idea. <laughs> you guys want to? Um, you want to take the car and uh, question this guy somewhere privately, and then. I'll stay back and keep an eye on the building, see if, see if the creature either turns back to its form or continues to try and murder people, try to keep eyes on it but not approach. So I think a solid plan. I think that's a good idea. Somebody needs to keep an eye on it, at least from across the street. And yeah, keep, I got good uh, stealth. So. Keep, uh, keep communication with us. I think that we would say to Team B, we have our situation in hand at the moment. Um, find out what the other half is doing. If you guys are near the post office, yeah, I mean, if if what uh, if what Benjamin Hale was angry about not getting his delivery, it would suggest that uh, Harold Harold, the postal worker, has been affected by this icon, right? And is looking so there's for, yeah. so there's probably something supernatural going on over there as well. Do you, do you, do you, have you have we secured the, the package? No. Do we know where it is? Do we, we know where it is? We haven't even seen the package. No, but Benjamin Hale was angry enough to summon up some slimy beast because he didn't get his delivery <laughs> on time, you know. So. Okay. So um, I mean, I think also, I think, sorry, I think also for Team A, for us, um, if we question uh, Benjamin, he might be the answer for unsummoning the creature if he brought it here. Do we have anybody in our team with medical? I, I could do with a plaster. <laughs> there, there is either the first aid, uh, probably first aid skill. Um, first aid is ten percent. If you've that's all I, I don't know if anybody has that. That's all I got to. Well. Right, well, if the team is telling us they have the budget, yeah, I was just gonna. I think we're gonna say the same thing. I just want to be clear: is Team A telling us that the situation is under control at the apartments? We're saying that we have the so we have the situation as best as we can do it at this point. All right, you're advising us to go to the post office, find out what the other half is doing. Yeah. Okay. Because it could be just as bad. Turn the car around. Let's go back. <laughs> Turn okay. around. So, so we'll be just okay. like a like a Starsky and Hutch style Yui in the middle of the street, <laughs> and, and smoking the, tires. And for the record, we have we want the, uh, Deep Blue to contact headquarters and tell them that the situation at the ho at the apartment is more than we can handle at the moment. It's, yeah, we're just trying to keep yeah. eyes on the target. We have Benjamin Hale in our custody. We don't have a headquarters. Sure, we do. Alpha, Alpha team. Yeah, we have. 
You would have an, a, a way to send an encrypted message to them. Yeah. Qu okay. Question for the. Itself. I thought they left us on their own. I've got a question for the GM. Is yeah. is there is there like sound coming from the building as if the creature is still going rampant, or has anything changed? Since you you, you really can't tell with the uh, the with the the fire alarm going. You can hear sirens of, of fire trucks in the distance and people running and screaming out. You you can't tell. All right, so let's rough up him, Benjamin. Let's question him while well, we got him in the back of the back seat. Okay, so you guys are in the the parking lot of the the uh, the apartment uh, right now. Are you just going to stay there? Is there uh, any place that's a little less conspicuous? You can probably find one. Oh, yeah. Brock, you're staying we'll here, right? Spot. Yeah, we'll just drive over there. Okay, so Brock, you're not staying there, correct, Ben? Yeah. I no, no, I will if you guys want a question. That's fine. Well, I thought you were staying uh, to watch the building. Yeah, that's why I just meant if there was some place like in the parking lot that was less conspicuous. I want to, oh. I want to get it someplace like an abandoned warehouse. We. Oh I, yeah, yeah. Okay. My, I just meant. I was thinking seconds matter right now since that thing's rolling around. So before they leave, like you know, I figured this is all within a couple seconds. Throw them in the back seat. Right before I leave, I'm like, how do we get rid of that fucking thing? And I kind of give him a little shake and then put a little pressure on his wound. Okay. Uh, so you, who are, who's driving then? No, I mean before they even leave, I, but like I'm like here's the okay. keys. He's in the back seat. I just fucking slam him up against the wall. Okay. Well, you know, the, the, and put my finger on his little wound. I, I kind of yeah. try to pull Brock off because it's like, dude, that's my speciality. <laughs> All right, we'll get the fucking in right now. Okay. okay. I want. How do we get rid of it? Does he say anything? <laughs> he like, kind of coughs up some blood and just kind of laughs uh, some a, a weak laugh, but really doesn't say anything. All right, get back to me as soon as you can, guys. And I throw him the keys. I'm be like, you only play Zeppelin. And then I, then I go find a nice hiding spot where I uh, got an advantage so I can see who's going in and out. Okay, <clears throat> you're you're able to find that without without a problem. Uh, team A, the rest of Team A, uh, will say you're driving. You're going to drive around for a couple minutes to find an abandoned warehouse. It's not difficult to find an abandoned warehouse where near where you're at. Uh, right. Deep Blue, uh, well, actually, Team B as you you know do the the 180 in the uh, the road and start uh, speeding towards the post office. Deep blue, you hear over the police band radio. The police operator starts to ask for a status from the police at the post office, and there is no response. Okay, um, I re I immediately relay to uh, to the team that there's no response to the police station. I think there is a problem. And with that, Team B, you pull up to the post office, or you start approaching the post office. You can see that there are two uh, police cars there with the sirens uh, flashing. Uh, the, the sound isn't going, they're, they're just uh, flashing. There are people running down the road away from it, uh, but there are no police in sight. Agent Tolle, could you drive us to the post office back entrance? I see no reason to get into the front. Okay. So we'll kind of go into uh, into tactical mode and try and... We, we know that there's a rear entrance because that's where we went in. We went in through the employee entrance. So um, we can see if we can if we can go in through there in case there's any onlookers from the the front of the the business. You know, we're, we're not, we're not okay. spotted. So you, you pull around to the back of the post office. Uh, there's nobody around. The door, the back door is shut. Locked. Hmm. Are you going to try it? Yeah. Uh, so you get up, you jiggle the handle. It is not locked. I should have shoot. Ah, it's not locked. Okay. Or it's locked. Do we hear anything? It's not. Uh, give me listen rolls or alertness rolls. I'm sorry. Successful. Pass. Crit fail. Uh, those who succeed hear nothing. Okay. Well, let's just take a moment here, guys. I, at the least, we have an active shooter situation. Um, police are, you know, if, if we didn't see them, that means police could either be down or could have left the area 
um, in, in pursuit. Um, so I think we can, you know, carefully anchor it and try and clear the, the building. Um, what, do, what do you guys think before we kind of really quickly in the moment before we, before we enter? I yeah. think that we should go enter and shoot it down or try to capture him. There might be hostages inside. They might be, and maybe not. And uh, as we saw, there is no police outside, so maybe he's already killed them. Yeah, we also need to be careful if uh, you know if, if the police are inside, then we want to be careful. They don't think that we're the attackers. We don't want to kill the police. Tyler, like yep. you said this is a small town, right? Yeah. Um, we only saw two police cars, so it's safe to assume. I mean, we don't know for sure, but it's safe to assume there's probably two to four police. Yeah, uh, that would be safe to assume. Plus, they likely have the ability to call in the state police, uh, which would would have something fairly close by. The state police will probably take would take probably ten to fifteen minutes to get there. Okay, we don't see that yet. Well, we have no, rush. we do not. Yeah, we need to be really careful here because if uh, reinforce if they did call for reinforcements uh, before they either went down or left in pursuit and reinforcements show up and we're inside. Yeah. That's the stuff. Uh, by the way, Tyler, can I use some kind of my military science lab to get our a better position, or maybe just to get the knowledge of my character about such situation, how to assault this building in a better way? You mean you want to roll to do that? If I can. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So let's <laughs> No, I failed. Get no information. So do it in the usual way. I'll contact uh, Deep Blue. Are you able to hack into their security cameras? We saw their cameras earlier. I'll I'll see what I can do. I'm not guaranteeing you anything, but I will try and uh, hack into their Okay. Keep us posted. All right, we going in then? Yeah, let's get inside. Can yeah. I? I'm gonna roll right now. See if I can. And I do. What did you roll? How, how, how well? Was see it if set? I can try and. Uh, uh, I, I, I know what, what. What did you roll? And what was your skill? Oh, uh, computers, and I got a fifty-eight uh, out of sixty. Okay, so you. So, uh, Deep Blue, you do uh, work some magic and are able to hook into one of the cameras. Uh, I'll tell you what you see because they're breaching uh, as as you're doing this. Uh, so, uh, Team uh, B, you uh, describe for me how you're you're going in. Right. Is everybody wearing any kind of vest or armor? Or yeah, I've got my uh, vest on. I've got a vest. Get no armor. Let's see. Um, are you either of you guys military guys? Yes, we call. Okay. So yeah, maybe please. you can take point. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about you open the door and we go in one at a time? You okay. go yeah, first? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll kind of I'll kind of hang back a little bit. Then I'll I'll enter after you after you maybe yeah. call the friends clear. Yeah, just stay on our backs to cover from the gunfire and look, maybe something. Yes, okay. Yeah. You want to go first, Mulvane? Yeah, I can go first. Okay, okay. I'm right behind you. Okay, so uh, you open the door. Uh, as soon as you open the door, everybody is just assaulted with this fetid, swampy smell that just hits you. Uh, uh, the first uh, two to, to go in, you go into the, if you remember, you're going into the, the back of the post office, which is mm -hmm. like a, uh, a storage area in the, in the sorting area. Uh, give me uh, sanity checks. Actually, all three of you will give me sanity checks because you're all eventually going in there. Successful. Okay. If you uh, if you made it, you only lose one. If you failed, uh, lose a D four insanity. 
uh, because as you go in, you can see that lying on the ground in, uh, in two different uh, places of the back room. And Deep Blue, this is what you see on the camera as, as you go in. You see uh, Susan Freckley and Mitchell, the, the two postal workers, lying on the ground, uh, one, at, uh, one next to a counter and the other on the other side of the, uh, of the, uh, the storage area, both just with shotgun blasts on them. Uh, um, just right in their midsection. I'm relaying all this information that I see to them. Okay, and, and they see this as they, they they breach as well. So you're kind of confirming everything for them. Uh, in addition to that, in various places around the room, you see puddles of black water. What's the uh, consistency? Can I make a, a forensic throw to, or is it obvious it's just a? More of a water, more of an oil. Uh, it looks it, it shimmer is more like water than oil, uh, but it's very dark. Any sign of uh, police? You do not see any police. Now that we've opened the door, do we hear anything yet? Go ahead and give me alertness rolls. Everyone. Yeah, who's in there? Successful. Yeah, yeah, I passed that one. Uh, you're still not hearing anything. I'll, I'll, you just see what I described, and you uh, just, uh, this, the smell is even worse uh, of this swampy, fetid water as you enter into the building. Uh, Quietly holding my gun, uh, I move forward, checking all the rooms and looking for our shootout shotgun owner. Okay, you start moving forward. As you move forward, this gives you a view of... Uh, more of the post office. You can kind of see over the counter to the, the front area, the front lobby area, and you can see more uh, puddles of water uh, in there. Uh, and you can kind of see into the, the office, the, the small office that was in the back as well. And in there, you can just uh, out of the corner of your eye, you can kind of glimpse, uh, it looks like somebody is sitting behind the desk. You just kind of catch a, a glimpse of clothing. Uh, let's cut over to team a really fast uh so brock you're you're kind of uh hiding in the uh in somewhere uh, there's like let's say there's a little forest uh on the uh side of uh, the apartment building you're able to kind of hide yourself in there pretty well the uh the fire department has shown up uh, with a fire truck there are just people still streaming out. But you're positioned in a, in a way where you can kind of see the, the side of the building as well, uh, right next to where the uh, fire or the stairwell is, where all the windows are. And on about the fifth floor, you see one of the windows just burst out and that, that black slimy creature just jump out and land on the parking lot and start heading uh, off into uh, another forest, which is to the side. So it's you're about 50 or so feet away from it. All right, I'm gonna keep eyes on it and uh, try and trail it from uh, afar. Okay. So, and you know, update them with my status. Okay. So so you start going, uh, Agent Ty and Agent D, uh, mm -hmm. and you are you find a uh, an abandoned warehouse. Uh, pull in. Uh, shut the doors behind you. Uh, Benjamin Hale is in there. He is coughing up blood really badly. Okay. Uh, but what, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to try to patch him up a little bit to stabilize him. But um, first question, uh, and I, I'm, I'm presenting myself as angry. I, I guess my, my persuasion is high, so I'll, I'll use okay. that. Um, um, first question, how do we stop that creature? Uh, he's he, as he uh, go ahead and roll. All right, thirty-five out of seventy. Okay. Out of seventy. So he is coughing up blood as he does this. There's blood running down his his chin, and he kind of laughs and says, "says the the creature was summoned by me. You can't to stop it. Only I can unsummon it." Well, you need to stop it. Look, look, we have the icon that you're looking for. And we're willing to exchange it for you stopping this creature. How do you stop it? He coughs uh, a bit more. And he says, uh, the, the only way is 
uh, to dismiss it is to, to is to know the 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 right incantations and what do we need to do that is that something that you can do from here give me a luck roll oh 72 that's a fail so he he coughs uh, a couple more times uh, and you as he uh, spits out uh, a little bit more blood he kind of wheezes out uh, in his last breaths yeah you'll never find my book and then just falls to the ground dead Shit. i look at the other ones i say of course i was lying he's gonna put a bullet in his head anyway but, uh, <laughs> there's a book um uh deep blue radio uh, patches into brock okay i will uh i will immediately do that right now brock what's the status of the creature <clears throat> Just left the building. It's about uh, a couple hundred yards ahead of me. I'm keeping my eyes on it. Uh, Hale, Hale let slip that there's a book in his apartment that uh, might have some sort of uh, incantation to dismiss the creature. All right, well, I'll keep my eyes on this thing. It's taking a move into the woods. Uh, any way you can get back to his apartment? Yeah, I think we're going to head right back there. Yeah, let's do it. Their firemen have showed up right. already. So uh, just, uh, you know, make sure you act like a resident or something. Uh, just like a postal inspector. Um, I'll do what I can to make myself look a little bit more official. <laughs> yeah, just casual, whatever. All right, uh, Brock, give me a search roll. All right, 30 even. Is that a pass for you? I'm going to check. Right. Search is based off base of. You only have base? No, what's. Um, let me see. Base oh, is 20. Let me see what the. Um, I thought. All right, surgery. Search 20. Yeah, I got a 20. I failed. Okay. So, um, all right, you're, you, you continue on. It goes down into this ravine. You're in a very. Uh, heavily wooded area and you lose its trail for the moment going back to team b uh you are in the post office uh i believe it was agent hammer correct who who oh no 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 i'm sorry uh jason uh you look into yes, the, uh, the uh, office you and to, uh, <clears throat> agent hammer to show that there's a person behind the counter so we can move it quietly no speak no radio just uh trying to cover it and in the same way i trying to look uh, in the uh, all the direction to maybe there's another one person outside <coughs> there or somewhere inside so keep on moving from it, on it okay <clears throat> so you maneuver around uh you can as you kind of get a better uh maneuver or view of the office you see that there is another person uh, in there, uh, dressed in a postal uniform, sitting behind the desk, not uh, with their back to you. But they're in like a swivel chair, and the so the swivel chair is uh, turned around so its back is facing you. Uh, he gets some kind of handcuffs, or he's tied to the chair, or not? No, he, as far as you can tell, he's just sitting there. There's no handcuffs. There's, or uh, I'm sorry, maybe I misunderstood you. Okay, so we get the two persons, and I uh, give a thanks to Agent Hammer about the second target. Okay. And I offer him to let's face them, and if it's a hostile, uh, if it's an uh, hostile, we'll finish it, or if it's an prisoners, we'll get him back to the safety. Okay. 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 So we do. Okay. So. So who who is going in first then? Uh, Jason. I'll go first to the second one, which I found last. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, you uh, go in. Uh, as you get closer, uh, you can see that they're sitting there. There is a shotgun on their lap. Their their back is still to you, uh, but they're not moving. Mm hmm. 
I grab him. Can you please explain, uh, describe once again his bag and the shotgun near his hands or someone near him? So you so as you're getting closer, you can kind of see him just like sitting in, in this uh, office chair. Uh, it, it's back to you, so you can kind of see over his shoulder uh, as you get closer, and you can see a shotgun lying in his lap, uh, but his hands uh, seem to be on the sides of the uh, armchair, not not holding it. You. As I get from his bag, I'll uh, give a. I'll strike him in a. I don't know how to call it in English. <laughs> yeah, in his shoulder, and uh, with a hand, and pull it back to throw it on the floor, and uh, with a second hand, just try to grab off the shotgun. Okay. Uh, so you're you're able to grab uh, the shotgun with one hand, and with the other, are you just? Kind of pushing him, or are you just trying to spin him around to, to, to see you? I pushing him onto the floor. Okay, so, so he falls with the back on the floor and so his face and move. Uh, okay, try to move it. So you do that. Uh, you you grab the shotgun, uh, pull it away from him, and push him, and he just falls uh, face first onto the floor and just falls kind of limp. Uh, much easier than than you expected it to be, and as he falls, his his face kind of turns towards you, uh, so he he's looking right at you, uh, and you you've seen pictures uh, of <clears throat> of um, of Harold Nixon uh, with uh, the research that you guys had done and the personal files at, at the post office, and you immediately recognize him as as Harold Nixon. However, his face is just covered in this dried black uh, swampy water just all around his mouth and as he topples forward some of it spills out onto the floor uh, so uh, agent hammer and um, agent olive uh, both of you give me luck rolls and let me know what you roll Ooh, 58 for me i rolled to 07 okay so agent hammer uh, you uh, you are both uh so tell me where you both are standing as uh, Jason goes into the office. I figured I'm covering him, so I'm, I would be as he moved into the office. I would be standing at the doorway, um, okay, with my with my gun targeted on the man behind the desk and scanning at the same time to see if there are other people in the room. Okay, yeah, I would kind of be keeping one eye maybe on the on the back door while also trying to maybe clear the rest of the building and just make sure uh, if the police is still inside or if there's any other victims. Okay, so where you're you're standing at, um, Agent Hammer, you're you're kind of covering uh, Jason as he's going into the office. So you're kind of standing a little bit farther into the building, uh, Agent Olive. You're kind of looking all around, sweeping, uh, and Deep Blue, you are still watching the cameras, correct? Or the cameras? Yes. Yeah. All right, so, so you can see this as well. So Agent Olive and Deep Blue, both of you, give me sanity checks. That's a fail for me. And Deep Blue? I pass. Okay. So Deep Blue, go ahead and take uh, D4 of Sanity. Agent Olive, uh, D8. Oh, wow. What, what is it? What Do I know it's impacting me? You just uh, I'll tell your mom to raise my Santa Claus. <laughs> I lost two Sanity. Oh. All right. Well, I got a three. Okay. So both of you see uh, from a puddle about a foot away from, uh, behind Agent Hammer, this creature rise out of the uh, of the puddle itself from the floor. It uh, starts to pull itself up, and you can see it, it first reaches out with these very elongated arms uh, that are kind of a gray a mottled color, ending in very sharp claws. And it, its head rises above the water, and all you can see is this long, stringy hair just uh, that f is all over it, its face and it starts to pull itself up um, and as it gets uh, for about to about waist high as you see this uh, it's just completely uh, uh, this gray modeled color humanoid uh, shape uh, Agent Hammer give me a sanity check as well because you start to smell this just horrid horrid smell even even worse uh, than before uh, 
from right behind you. Uh, 33 is actually a critical success. Oh, cool. So just lose one then. One? Okay. Uh, however, does it, it, does it in any way resemble a, a human, or is it just a, a, a humanoid shape? It's humanoid, yes. Yeah. Uh, so Agent Hammer, uh, go ahead and give me an alertness roll, and we'll see if... Uh... Wow, same exact roll, 33. All right, so I will... Uh, is that a pass for you? Yeah. Okay. So I will let you decide. Uh, you, you can react to this thing uh, behind you. Yeah, I think once I see the man behind the desk kind of flop, I feel like the threat's over. So then I'll, I would have turned around to check on Olive, and then that's probably when I saw the two of them. Right. Also, I would have, I would have kind of had you in comp, like, <gasps> oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, would I shoot? I don't know if I would shoot. Um, I'm gonna yell, yell at Alo to get away. How close is she? Uh, about uh, ten feet away. Yeah, when, when it's when it's my turn, Olive would definitely fire. Okay. Uh, well, what, if, what are all that close? I would just, you know, kind of fight uh, instant fight or flight response. I think she would, she would fire. Okay. Well, Agent Hammer, I'll let you go first. Uh, yeah, I, th I think honestly, um, with my indecision, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ready myself to fire, but I'm not gonna shoot. Okay. So this, you turn around, you know, you see this thing, uh, and it just lunges at you as soon as you see it. Um, so I. It's totally up to you. You can either uh, dodge or you can cut a hold and then fire right after. Uh, yeah, I think I would dodge. Okay, so go ahead and roll dodge. All right. Uh -oh. 87, I'm sure, is a fail. Yeah. Okay, are you wearing any armor? Yes, I have a, a vest on. Okay. Uh, so it... You see this elongated arm with these uh, long claws reach out, uh, slash across your chest. Uh, you take nine points of damage minus whatever your armor is. Oh boy! Oh my god! It's going to be six total then. Did they saw or see something to fit or did I just busy with the body? You, you're. This is happening as you kind of push uh, the body. Okay. Over. You'll be able to react uh, next turn. Uh, Agent Olive, what are you doing? Yeah, crazily, uh, I also rolled an 87 for uh, my uh, my gunshot, so I missed. Um, so okay, I, I guess it moved. It went moved, went to attack hammer more quickly than I could shoot, so I missed. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so uh, then we'll go uh, next round. Uh, Jason, you can uh, react as well. So, uh, just so I know, what are all of your dexes again? 65. Same. Okay. All right. The the creature gets to go first. Uh, it's uh, extremely fast. Uh, after uh, uh, Agent Hammer, after it uh, raked its craw uh, claws across you, it goes and it jumps towards you to try to grab you. Uh, let me know if you're going to try to dodge or not. Are you dodging? I'm sorry, I, I was lost. Yes. Um, uh, I think if I dodged the first one, I would have regained my wit, so I'm going to try to shoot back this time. OK. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Okay. Uh, that's probably going to hit. Where's my fire? Yes, hit 30 out of 60. 40 out okay. of 60. Go ahead and roll damage. Because uh, as you uh, as it lunges forward uh, towards you, uh, you shoot, uh, knocking it back uh, a little bit, uh, making it so that it misses you. Uh, perfect. Uh, six points. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then we go to uh, Jason. What are you doing? I grab the shotgun and shoot into the creature. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Seventy. 
success. Okay, go ahead and, and roll damage. Uh, <clears throat> as Agent Hammer steps back uh, and he lets off his shot, uh, it gets thrown back even farther by the blast of the, uh, your shotgun just uh, hitting it. Okay, a uh, shotgun from the post office. It was loaded with a slug or with a... Oh, <laughs> yeah, don't be loud. Not a slug, because there is a lot of difference in damage. Uh, we'll say slug. We say slug. Okay, then it's 2d6, yeah? Okay. It's 6 and it's 4. It's total 10 damage. Okay, so you uh, hit it uh, directly. This. Uh, black slimy ichor just goes spraying everywhere uh, as you hit it right in its arm, uh, <clears throat> knocking it back. But it's it's still moving uh, as you do that. Uh, Agent Olive, what are you doing? Well, after seeing how it ripped into Hammer's ripped through his body armor, I'll, I'll kind of take a couple steps back and uh, not retreat, but take a couple steps back and try and fire again. Okay. I, I've seen I've seen it take damage, so I'm gonna try and add to that. And I have passed. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Damage. Damage is three. Okay. <clears throat> so you uh, kind of graze it. Uh, what are you shooting? Just a, a shooting a, uh, a clock. Okay. So you you shoot it, you graze it, uh, and it. Uh, across its uh, arm um, it more of this black ichor starts spewing out uh, but it is it pulls itself up uh, and it just dives into the uh, the water uh, that it came out of and just goes right in and disappears did it make any kind of uh, sounds of, of pain or anything when we shot it or was it completely silent oh no it was uh, yeah it was uh, making uh, this like high-pitched screech uh, as as you you shot it, you were definitely hurting it. Uh, going back to uh, Team B, uh, Brock, you still have not been able to uh, pick it up, uh, pick up its trail yet. Uh, Agent Ty and uh, Agent D, uh, you're in the warehouse. What are your plans? Um, we're going to try to go back to the the apartment. Just um, just so you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them at the that. The other team is having a shootout with the thing that looks like one of the creatures in the Black Lagoon, kind of. Yeah, I think everything lies in the possibly in in the book. Um, I mean, we're we're not unused to uh, weird things. So, um, what we're going to try to do is when we get back to the apartment, that I imagine there's going to be a lot of confusion. And we are going to try to slip in a door without drawing too much attention to ourselves. Okay. You know, so if, the, if the if the firemen go this way, we're going to go. That what way. are you What are you doing with uh, Hale's body? Just leave it there. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, I've lost a uh, sight of the slimy booger. The booger is nowhere to be found. Okay. Meet us back at the apartment. I'm going to keep an eye out, see if I can't find it. All right, you keep looking so, for it then. I'm going to keep walking around. I got a pretty high alertness, so even though I can't find its trail, I'm going to, you know, skulk around, see if it, if it doesn't, uh, you know, I can't hear some movement or something. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me an alertness roll then. Uh, 24 out of 80. Okay, you, you don't see uh, it around you at all. Um, you're, you think, uh, well, you know that it, it's not around you at, at the moment. Um, okay. Uh, team B is get, or Team A is going to take you uh, a minute or two to get back to the apartment. So going back to Team A, the thing has just jumped into one of the puddles. Uh, the, so all three of you are in the, excuse me, all three of you are in the uh, uh, post office. Uh, Jason, give me a spot or an alertness roll. Not a problem. 88, good fail. So you are just completely distracted by what just happened. Uh, and so oh, yeah, you don't really it. see anything else. Right. So it, it is uh, silent uh, in the post office right now. I wonder if we could maybe... I'm sorry, go ahead, Jeff. I, I just wanted to just... Uh... 
as I'm seeing this in my head as you're explaining, these puddles, this thing dove into the puddle. It's, it's like a normal puddle on the ground, right? It's not like there's a... So it, so you, you look at it a little bit closer now, and it, it looks like a, a puddle on the ground, but at, the water is almost pure black. And you, as you look at it a little bit closer, you get the feeling that it's not like a normal puddle where if you spilled water on the floor, you could see the floor underneath. It's hmm. completely black. Okay. So there's black water and the stuff and a... Get the enchanted squeegee. <laughs> I want to try and put on uh, some uh, like uh, just rubber gloves and uh, try to maybe put my go, go to the one where the, the creature disappeared in and kind of put my, my fingers in it and see if it if I find the floor or something else. Okay, so yeah, you've got uh, uh, you put you would probably have gloves on or, or nearby. Uh, I think mean, it's a given. Uh, you go and you you put your hands uh, uh, in there. Uh, give me a dexterity roll. This sounds really dangerous. Yeah. Maybe I put a barrel inside the black spot and just put a trigger. That's the dex roll. Okay. You you put your hand in and your hand actually goes into the water as if there's uh it, it almost like it's a hole into you know some some other place uh and you pull your hand out really fast and just as you do you see uh, the creature's hand reach out and try to grab your hand miss and then go back down into the and disappear into the water oh well and, and so the puddle kind of like ripples yeah so we got some kind of obviously some kind of portal, and like I said, there are multiple puddles uh, all around the the post office. So I'll tell Jason, uh, who is still in kind of close close closest to Nixon, to search the body, and then we should we should probably try and get out of here. Um, the uh, the postal workers are already dead. <clears throat> Police are nowhere in sight. Uh, probably not much more we can do here. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Jason. Are you going to start uh, searching? What? Um, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's some some bodies because they are found. We find, find, find only two, and both of them are dead. So maybe there is a policeman or some part of it. Okay. Just to know. All right. So are you, you start searching uh, the body uh, that's in there in the office? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're searching? I'm searching in the post office and uh, like the, I can say the whole building in uh, this room and next to it. So I try to, to cover as much as possible territory and keep on looking on these black spots. Maybe there's okay. more of them. All right, so, so give me a uh, search roll then. Or, oh, or alert, okay. whichever is higher for you. And. Search uh, alertness successful. Seventy-three okay. of eighty. So you start uh, searching around. Uh, it, it takes you uh, thirty seconds to a minute because you're, you're kind of going through it as fast because you know that there's this creature around here, and you come across in the corner of the room. You find this uh, wooden. Uh, essentially, it looks like a uh, a. A polished piece of wood. It has some. Uh, it's about a f one foot by uh, one foot or so, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, it has some Russian lettering on it, uh, but it's and it has almost like an area where it looks like uh, there would be a picture on it. Uh, but where the picture is, there is is nothing there. <coughs> I take it and cower in my skirt. Okay. And signal to the team that I got the icon. And in any way, I'll keep on looking around. Maybe it's not this alone. I do not remember. It should be a one item or a few items, just okay. to take make sure that we do not leave anything behind. Okay. So you start searching around again. Uh, what are the what are you, uh, the other two doing? Well, I guess we would hear him call out that he. That he found that I we're, we're assuming this is the icon. Uh, this is our objective, right? 
Yeah, it's not going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe maybe now that we've got what we're looking for, maybe we. Wondering, um, the thing that's crossing my mind that I'll that I'll say out loud at this point to you guys is, uh, um, this thing is supposed to be able to summon Rasputin. Was that the case? I remember oh, there was a mention. Yeah. And and this thing was was humanoid, but it it didn't fully resemble a person. I'm wondering if, kind of either. This thing is some type of avatar of Rasputin, or, um, or just some entity that kind of revealed itself to be Rasputin, um, <laughs> and that's why they, they thought it was. I'm trying to kind of piece together what what we've been fighting, what we saw, with what we know so far about the Psycon. When they finally killed Rasputin, wasn't it because they drowned him? Is that part of the legend? Here we got yeah, that, that, that's, that's correct. They tried to drown him. Yeah, that's right. And poison uh, uh, him and, cut, and dismember him and all sorts of things. And um, shot him. We don't know that it actually has anything at all to do with Rasputin. That's just a rumor. I'm assuming that we're all in communication via comlink. Yeah, totally. Yes. So, guys, is there anything we, else we want to try to accomplish at the post office before... Uh, any more law enforcement? I, I know the kind of these puddle portals, whatever they are, are th the scene is not secure. But I'm not sure what we can do unless we actually do blow the building up. Go get a mop. Or a... Can, you, can you blow the building up so they're not able to get to the the puddles till maybe we resolve this situation? But we don't have ordinance. What if? Are you guys still at the post Shit. office? Yeah, we're still there. I don't know. Maybe if there's a what get if you try system, we can just them. blow it up. Why don't you try blocking them with something like flip the desk over on top of them or see if you can I, dissipate the water. I'm afraid it would not help us having the desk on top of it. Maybe it could move outside. And, Maybe. And, there, and there's probably a dozen or more puddles. No, the, one, so it's the one that's close. Sorry. The one, the one that's closest to me. I'm sure there's probably a chair in the post office back room, right? Oh, yeah. Could I try to toss or yeah, what if we kick the chair into the puddle, see what happens? Sure. Uh, you, you kick the chair. Uh, it uh, skips across the floor. Uh, two of its, uh, it's just like a normal chair, not, not an office chair. Uh, mm -hmm. Two of its legs go uh, hit the puddle and just kind of fall over. So it's like laying half in the, the puddle. <clears throat> Nothing happens for uh, a couple seconds. And then you see these uh, the two hands uh, just reach up and grab it and just yank it down. And the chair, this was a metal chair, just crumbles as it goes into the water. Yeah, I think we might. Guys, got any grenades? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, let me check. There's no guarantee that would do anything at all. Uh, no, get no grenades. There has to be some way he have you checked the body to see if there's something that he has that might have opened the portals? Oh, good idea. So I'll check the bodies too. Or maybe if someone help you, we can. I, I'll keep on checking the room and somebody will check the bodies. Agent Hammer, what about you? A, 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 couple of, a couple of options. Maybe, guys, you could actually position yourself over puddles and shoot, shoot into them at the same time. Or uh, I think what it sounded like was that the figure had come off the icon. Was that right? Um, the the face or the character had disappeared off the icon or something. So you could always launch the icon in. What if I put the icon near the puddle or inside the puddle and the face appear back on it? So like a decimal on it. Well, our instructions are to, to put the icon in, into the green box, right? Yes, but yeah. uh, it's nothing yeah. strange if I uh, touch so one puddle with the icon. Just so let's we, try it. Yeah, we, if we throw the, the icon into the puddle, then it, it disappears. The creature will have it. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't want to so throw as, as you're all saying this, one of the puddles just explodes in water, and the creature jumps out. Uh, it, it's just for ease, we'll say that. Uh, Agent Hammer and Agent Olive, you're on one side of the room, uh, Jason, because you, because you were searching around, you're on the other side of the room. It, it comes, starts uh, going right towards Jason. 
Oh, uh, you guys can each have one action. Uh, I should have got out of here. Yeah. Uh, Jason, what are you doing oh, first? You try and come to me? Yes. <sighs> okay. I'll try it. I, I'll shoot it as it's run under me. Okay, go ahead and roll. And successful and two deceits of damage. Okay. Six and three and so it's total eight damage. Oh, nine damage, sorry. Nine damage. So you have the, the shotgun, uh, you let loose, you know, hit its leg, its uh, leg just uh, from at the kneecap just explodes and it stumbles forward, kind of falling on the ground. Uh, the um, This black Icarus blood spewing uh, in, out of its leg, just kind of going out in spurts as it just coats the entire floor. Uh, it Its claws, though, it... Uh, are pulling itself forward towards you. Uh, its arms can reach like four feet in front of us, in front of it. So it's pulling itself across the floor uh, towards you uh, very quickly. Uh, Agent uh, Olive, what are you doing? Uh, it happened too quick for me. I, I fire and miss. Okay, and then uh, Agent Hammer. Yep, gonna shoot. I I also yell, "Let's get out of here!" So let, let's try and let's try and beat a retreat. Yeah, uh, nice opportunity. One is a success. Okay, go ahead and roll. Five damage. Okay. So you shoot it uh, right into its back, uh, right where uh, you imagine its spine would be. Yeah, and the, its back just uh, opens up and there's more blood and ichor is just coming out, coating the room. The smell in the room is almost unbearable now, but it, it, it continues to pull itself forward more weakly now, but it's coming right towards uh, uh, Jason, and it uh, reaches for you to try to uh, slash you with one of its claws uh, and just barely misses. Okay, so that next section is mine, yep. Yes. I still get the terror is that uh, if I hit it with the icon, it could get back. So I'll drugs an icon and holding it in two hands, just smash it into the head of this creature with a screaming, like, get back, you bastard. Okay, uh, give me a, uh, you know, I, you, you can do that. I'm not even going to make you roll because it's, you know, basically right in front of you. Uh, mm -hmm. You smash it with the icon. Go ahead and give me a, a d6 roll. Oh my God. It's five. Uh, you smash it with the icon caving in its head as you do. Uh, the the creature shudders uh, a couple times on the floor, uh, goes into some spasms, and then falls still. Almost immediately, it begins to dissolve into that black, uh, Icarus uh, swampy water. And instead of the water just staying there, the water starts to retreat into the puddles. Uh, you can see it kind of uh, start streaming on its own back into the puddles itself. And what's about puddles? They're still here or start to disappear? Yes, they're, no, they're still there. Bad Going ass. back to Team B. By this point, uh, <clears throat> Team B, you have made it back to the apartment. Uh, that, like I said, there are uh, fire uh, engines there. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, by this time, there are people all over the place. Uh, that are just standing outside trying to figure out what's going on. Is this a fire drill? Did somebody pull it? Because uh, nobody is seeing any uh, uh, any uh, fire uh, or a smoke or anything like that. Uh, so Agent D and um, uh, Agent Ty, what are you doing? Well, are they are they reacting like there's dead bodies in the place? Uh, no, nobody yet. Uh, but the the fire uh, the firemen are still just kind of. Uh, being cautious, uh, they're just kind of scanning everything. Okay, I'm going to look. A couple have obviously gone in. I'm going to do my best at first to stealth my way in. And okay. if that doesn't work, I'm going to uh, pretend to be like a federal agent or something. Okay. Uh, agent D, what are you doing then? Well, I, I just want to really use the confusion and try and get in there. Preferably if I can get to a lift because I've been quite badly damaged and get up to that floor. Okay, uh, so 
Uh, Agent Ty, uh, go ahead and make a, a stealth roll for, for both of you. Oh, jeez. My stealth's not very good at all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing because it's been like two minutes I've been out in the woods essentially, right? Like while I'm kind of waiting for this thing to come around. Right. All right. So I'm gonna stay with the FAO. I am pretty stealth. Uh, so I'm gonna There's give it a shot one in, and I succeeded with a 66 out of 70. Okay, Agent High, how much did you fail it by? Uh, I got 40 percent, and I've only got 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, as so, Brock, you come out of the forest. There is one of the the side fire exits that, that's open uh, that leads right into the stairwell that you can get into without a problem. Uh, Agent Ty and Agent D, as you're you're trying to go into the the front door, uh, one of the firemen comes out at that point. It's kind of like, whoa, whoa, you guys can't go in here. What what are you doing? I'm like a uh, federal agent. I'm like uh, we're we're investigating something going on in this building. It's like, oh, well, you, you give me a, or it says, you know, I'm sorry, you can't go in there. There there are, you know, there's a potential fire in here. We can't let anybody in here until we clear the building. I understand. Uh, I know the risk. I'm, I'm, I'm an agent of the government, so um, persuade. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Got seven. I, Out of, uh, like, uh, I, I act like I'm. Yeah, I, I know you're a fireman, and I know what the risks are, and I'm 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 a federal agent. I'm just going in. So uh, and you, you just kind of you both just kind of push past him, and you could hear him stammering, going, uh, "What? But I," uh, and he he's like some some rookie fireman, so he doesn't really know what to do, and so you just kind of uh, push in there. Um, the the uh, elevator is is open. You can tell that the uh, the fireman disabled it, uh, so the only way up is through the uh, the stairwell. Um, and you can kind of make your way there, and as you make your way there, that's when Brock comes into it, and the okay. three of you meet up again. D, D, you're injured, aren't you? Yeah, I yes, get very injured. I, I get Brock to carry me upstairs. I got you, buddy. Piggyback. Right. <laughs> I was going to say you could take advantage of the guys outside and let them rescue you. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Okay, you're fucking hardcore, man. All right. Stuff, no, no. Do you know? Do you know what? I'm dying, but get me up there because the only thing I'm good at is occult and all that stuff. And if there's a book right. up there, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Let's so you, that. you you make it up to to the apartment uh, up the stairs without a problem. Well, except for D, you you know you're hurting pretty badly as as you get up there. You I, I only have like one hit point left, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you make it back up to the apartment. You you go into the apartment, um, and you know the like I described before, the place is a, just a disaster. Uh, there's just clothes and trash and everything everywhere. Uh, although you you make it back into, uh, uh, I'm assuming you're, you're going to start searching around for this book, right? Yeah, we're going to use uh, uh, code uh, calculatus eliminatus. We're going to. Uh, the guy said we'd never find it, which means we we're going to look in all the places where it. It could be hidden. <laughs> okay. He called so, it in the bathroom first, so I said that's where we start the search, and then including uh, air vents and all sorts of yeah, yeah, elevator shaft, whatever. Okay. So you uh, start looking around. Um, <clears throat> within a couple minutes, you, you find you, you don't find uh, you know anything. Um, uh, you you basically find a, a diary uh, of Hale's. Uh, actually, you find a number of notebooks. Uh, that are just uh, that Hale obviously scribbled in and just wrote all these insane ramblings. Uh, give me a luck roll. There, there's like five of these things that like the five subject notebooks that he just you know, wrote and wrote and wrote in. I got a 45. I got a 13, so I passed my luck. Okay, I failed. Um, okay, uh, D, you're just. You, you, the pain has started to hit you. Yeah, you, you, in fact, you know, kind of collapse onto one of the couches, um, and just you know, can't move. Uh, uh, Agent Ty, you are looking uh, through the uh, through this uh, one of his notebooks, and it's just this insane rambling about uh, uh, elder gods and. Uh, just how he is trying to uh, obtain more power and how he's using his riches in, in order to, to get this. Yeah, he's very paranoid. 
uh, as you get towards the end of the notebook, as you're skimming through it, you see him start talking about how the government is uh, tapping his phones, how they're uh, keeping stuff from him. Uh, and you can kind of see where his, uh, why he was acting the way he did when you, when you guys tried to get in. Right. Brock, the, the notebook that you picked up, uh, you actually just happened to chance upon this uh, place where he starts talking about uh, a translation of a Russian priest's diary that he uh, that he had found, uh, and he starts going into a, a, that the Russian priest was describing the uh, the icon uh, from from what you can tell how it was a a, a piece of wood um, roughly about the size of what, of what they found with. Um, a picture of a demon on it uh, and Hale's uh, ramblings go on talking about how the rumors are that it's a way to contact Rasputin where, but, but those rumors are false, that it's actually the, uh, the, the kind of prison of a, uh, of a swamp demon uh, from Russia called the Boloshenik. Okay. Uh, so you, I like blue know that. And um, show it to uh, uh, my injured friend, co colleague, uh, and say, uh, "Does this make any sense? Do you know anything about anything like this?" Or uh, you I over while I while I keep searching around. I just and, need uh, and, a successful cult rule if that helps. Okay, so you, you start reading through it as well. You're you're seeing the same information. A lot of this is hard hard to digest quickly because Hale starts going off onto some tangents at, at one point, uh, and he goes back to the talking about the diary. And he's uh, the the last thing that he says about it is that the only way to rid the demon is return its prison to the depths. Oh, okay. You had it right the whole time, dude. I don't know. Maybe it's a whole bunch of Bolshevik. <laughs> I'd be a whole bunch of Bolshevik. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, uh, there, back to. Sorry, oh, Tom. On, sorry. There, there, there's nothing, nothing that speaks to the kind of uh, the other creature from the the apartment. Then it's more the other thing. Not, not that what you found in in the short time that you've been able to skim through everything. Sure. Thanks. Uh, right, so back so in a couple of useful books, right? Um, right? And that's in the apartment. Now, I don't know how this works. Like if we we made search rolls, is that kind of like that's what we found here? Or is there always a possibility if we kept searching, you never know? Or do we got to be more specific? Like we searched this area, we searched that area. No, no, that's it's pretty much what, what you're finding. Um, okay. I'm, uh, you know, I'm assuming you're going through this as quickly as possible. Uh, you know, you're not spending, you know, 10, 20 minutes searching. Uh, so, so, but you're looking at all. Leave, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that. Uh, so, you know, but but you're looking in all the places where you would expect things to be, and that's where where you're finding this. Uh, before right. we leave the building, I uh, the last time we saw him before he got injured was in the elevator. So I want to. I'd like to check uh, maybe the elevator shaft, or you know, kind of like maybe like inside. Maybe where the telephone is, or uh, you know, uh, one, like uh, the exit hatch in case he got stuck or something. Well, the the elevator is on the first floor. the The fire department has turned it off. So, you, but you can pry open the elevator doors on that level and look down the shaft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do that. Uh, and I'm so gonna look you, in the I'm gonna look in the reservoir of the toilet. <laughs> okay. You uh, in the Ziploc bag behind there. Uh, so Brock, you you go. Um, it, it, you're able to easily open up the uh, the elevator doors. Uh, assuming you have a flashlight, you look down the shaft and you just see the elevator at the bottom. There, there's nothing else. Okay. Uh, Egan Ty, you you go into the bathroom. You look behind the reservoir, and uh, there is nothing. I, I shout right. to Agent Ty, beware of puddles in the bathroom. Well, there's a blue one in here. Um, back to Team A. You're you're in the the post office still. Uh, Deep Blue. You hear over the police band radio that the state police are five minutes away from the post office. Yeah, guys, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Apparently, you so, need to throw the icon into the water or into. Yeah, the I was gonna say we let him. Yeah, know that, that, that I read. I basically relay it to. Okay. 
So as I get this information about throwing Zach into the puddle, I'll I'll have to do it. I understand that uh, we'll destroy the artifact, but from other side, we'll save this town from Bolotnik's puddles, which can destroy it whole. Okay. Assuming that, uh, assuming that the guy is not just insane and wrote the wrong thing. Yeah, if that's what you guys are telling us to do. I mean, you've got the the resource on hand. I would trust, you know, knowing that we time is of the essence, and uh, I probably wouldn't. Uh, John D, don't you? Uh, I that that's what we need to do. John D, traditionally, what destroys these creatures? Do you have any idea? Your uh, uh, I could try. Uh, yeah, successful roll. If that helps, Ty. Taylor. Um, you, you you don't really know. You know that uh, from legends, um, Russian folklore legends, that uh, the Boloshenik are uh, swamp demons that uh, typically will uh, grab passerbys and drown them in the uh, in in the swamp. the The way to destroy them, uh, you've never really been able to find out. Uh, except through uh, just, uh, you know, I guess, normal uh, damage and, and trying to destroy it while it's away from the swamp itself. Okay. I don't think that really gives us anything new, but, you know. I think you guys should mop there up a serious spot on the floor. When we talk about returning to the source, Assuming we hear the dialogue from Team A and, and that comms, do we know that the source that we need to return it to is the, the puddle or is an actual? Um, well, I guess the I guess the icon shipped from somewhere in Europe, right? Like are we when we talk about the liver, returning it to the source, is it where it came from or is it the Let's, puddle that the creature is coming to? He said, "Return it to the depths." Okay, correct. I think maybe so. We just inside that stuff. <clears throat> so Jason will will be holding the icon and put it slowly inside of uh, the puddle. Maybe the puddle will get back into the wood and appear on the icon, or maybe not. Just to see the reaction. Okay, so you're just like dipping it into it. You're not like yes. dropping it in or throwing it. In. I'm so as soon it. Right. Okay, so as soon as the the wood touches the water, the water begins to uh, move uh, up the uh, the wood itself, uh, and you can feel it pulling it down uh, very, very uh, strongly. Uh, the The water starts to to go up. Did we lose Vasil? No. Okay. I'm right. okay. All right. the, the, the water starts to uh, to go up, uh, and it starts to get very close to your hands as it, where you're gra grabbing it. I keep on holding. Okay, uh, the the water as it uh, it starts to pull it down, um, and the water uh, itself starts to cover your hands as you're holding it. It's covered the entire uh, piece of wood now. Uh, give me a, a strength roll. It's an enchanted sham wow. <laughs> I failed, uh, Jason. Uh, you you can feel uh, the the wood itself. The icon start it gets pulled down into the water, and your hands are getting pulled down as well. You're up to about your wrists now in in the puddle itself. And as uh, as this happens, the entire building starts to shake. I'll uh, let the icon go and try to jump out of it. Maybe to throw out my hand, or <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll try. We'll try and grab his legs and pull him if it seems like he's being. If it looks like he's being pulled in. Uh, I'll start screaming to you, like help me, guys, and screaming a uh, goblin that it's eating me, piece by piece, <laughs> finger by finger. <laughs> okay, uh, give me another uh, strength roll. Um, and well, what's your strength? Uh, my strength is uh, sixty. Okay, go ahead and give me another strength roll. Uh, 63, once again. Okay. With, with the help that they're uh, giving you, where they're pulling on you, um, you can, you know, even though you've let go, the, the, the water is pulling you down. 
but between all three of you uh, pulling on you and pulling out, you're able to kind of wrench yourself free. Uh, you, you fall back to the ground and the entire building is, is shaking. And you can see some of the puddles now have started to erupt this black uh, swampy water uh, so hard that it's hitting the ceiling uh, and just spreading all over the place. Oops, we did something wrong. You better get the hell out. Let's get out of here. Let's run away, yep. <laughs> Maybe the crazy guy was lying. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me, uh, so all three of you, give me uh, dexterity rolls. At, at this point, uh, Deep Blue, your uh, your camera feed cuts out. Hit. Sounds good. Pass. Good fail. It was a 66. Oof. Oh, so close each time, dude. Yeah, but it's like I have a third of 65 and die still, maybe 66. <laughs> Agent Hammer, did you make it? I failed by two points. Okay. So, the three of you run out of the building. Uh, as you're running out, the, the water is just spewing into the ceiling. You can just you know, hear it behind you. It sounds almost like a waterfall. Uh, Agent Olive, you make it to the car. You dive over your car and shield yourself on the other side. Uh, the the uh, the other two, uh, you get uh, most of the way there, and then just the building explodes from the force of this water uh, pressing into it. Uh, Agent Hammer, take D3 in damage, and uh, Jason, take D6 in damage, just from the debris of the explosion. And I guess, guess I don't have to worry about blowing the building now. Not a bit worse. Two points. Uh, I assume Jason is not dead. Jason not dead, but he is. Bum, bum. I lost half of my current hip HP, so I have to do a stun check. Okay. Did you? So have to my him? constitution and it's failed, so I get stunned. Okay. So uh, with the explosion, uh, a. Uh, Agent Hammer and um, Agent Olive, you kind of pick yourselves up. You see uh, Jason there kind of lying on the ground, uh, stunned, kind of half in and out of consciousness. And in the distance, you can hear sirens approaching. Police sirens. Just grab him, drag him to the car. Is, is he unconscious? For, for all intents and purposes, yeah. Can, can you lift him? Yeah, I got him. Yeah. Uh, I'll start him. If not, we'll have to push him into the water and disappear him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're, you're able to lift him. Uh, you jump in the car. Uh, I assume speed out of there. Uh, team A, or yeah, Team A, uh, you're, you're back at the apartment building. Uh, what are, are you doing? You, you found everything that you think that you've uh, been able to find. And, and um, if, if we're sure that there's no other books or any book of spells or anything that we're going to leave, we're going to sneak out the same way we came in. Okay. Get out in the confusion. Okay, you're uh, speaking simple. You're able to uh, sneak out. Um, you you pass some uh, firemen as uh, you you go out. Um, they, uh, but you're able to kind of talk your way around it, uh, blaming the, the one rookie uh, fireman as you go. Uh, you get to the car and you guys uh, head out as well. Uh, All right. We do have is, the journals with us. Yes. Da -da -da. So, so what, is, da -da -da. what is the plan after this? Bring some Zeppelin, get back to the base. We need, yeah, we need to get back to our own little headquarters and decide what the hell we're going to do. Did the icon disappear? Did it go in the water? Yes. yes. Yeah, we lost it. Okay. Um, we we radio over to uh, Team B. Uh, what's going on? What's the situation at the post office? It sounded like there was explosions. Situation is fucked. Mm. What post office? <laughs> we uh we 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 tried to uh put the put the icon in the water and the whole place exploded. We lost the icon. Hmm. Well, we need to get back to headquarters uh, and alert uh, Alpha Team and tell them <laughs> we're really fucked. That this mission has gone totally tits up. 
uh, and then see if we can figure out what, what else we can do. Um, we need to go over this journal thoroughly. Do we rendezvous back at the green box trailer? Yes. The green box okay. or back at the hotel? I say green box. Green box. Yeah, I think we need to kind of get out of town. Yeah, green box. I say hotel because I'm covered with black acre stink, so I won't get a shower. There's a shower there already that had the same type of stink on it. Oh, that's Remember right. we found that wetsuit and stuff. So that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, I think this, the depth that we were supposed to return the icon to were, was not the the puddle. So is uh, is somebody going to pick up Deep Blue? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, Deep I Blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you run right, so you run <laughs> Uber back. Dude, catch an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> you run you rendezvous back at the uh, green box at, at the trailer uh, and start going through the uh, the notebooks uh, a little bit more thoroughly. The notebooks are uh, a lot of it are Hale's just insane ramblings. Uh, you're able to tell that he is a uh, cultist of uh, uh, Sothagua. Uh, he talks about the, the his frog god. Uh, and or frog or toad god, and how he his goal is to worship him. You do come across the um, the, the spell to summon the servant of the toad, uh, which uh, describes it summoning a creature very similar to what you saw, and it looks like uh, actually uh, who would be reading this? Or I guess would, yeah, who who would be reading this one? Well, well, I think I would probably want to, but uh, having said that, before that, I'd probably want to get a little bit of medical attention. First aid, yeah. Well, you were. Oh no, you didn't hang out. Did you hang outside? No. No. We've got we've got no. medical equipment. At the, yeah, at go the ahead and gain a go ahead and gain a, a D four back. Actually, anybody who is wounded can go ahead and gain a D four back of uh, hit points. Cool. Uh, and then, okay. AGD, give, give me a occult roll. Yeah, passed. Okay, so you, um, as, as you're looking through this, you, you you find the information concerning the the servant of the the toad, and you you see that there were actually two uh, parts of the spell: one where it, it summons the creature, and one where it binds it. Uh, it looks, uh, from what you can tell, Hale did not have time to do the binding spell; he only summoned it. And <clears throat> from reading through the spell, it sounded like that after uh, a certain amount of time, if it wasn't bound, the creature would uh, go back to whence it came from. So in other words, uh, you're okay. pretty sure that it would have just returned to, to where and it I was. And I would have kind of confirmed that because I hung out in the woods looking for it for a couple of minutes. And, right. And Great, okay. That's one problem solved. And how about the puddle demons? Uh, you don't find uh, anything more other than what you found uh, previously. So that's got to be back at, uh, is it Benjamin who, or is it uh, the guy who uh, went in there and shot up the post office? How thoroughly did we able to Harold. search his residence? Yeah, that's Harold. Harold, yeah, sorry. You, uh, you, uh, the ones who were there um, were able to go through it uh, fairly thoroughly as, as they went through it. I don't think Harold knew what it was. Yeah, so I think it was the, an accident. So just to kind of you know wrap things up, you um, you you're at the uh, uh, green box. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, is like a final thing uh, for you guys. Making sure that all of our tracks are covered. Okay. So that we didn't leave any evidence anywhere. About it. We uh, we probably do not know what uh, Alpha Team is going to do. We just assume that they're going to send in a cleanup crew of some sort. <laughs> yeah, our tracks couldn't be less covered. I mean, there's a trail of dead bodies, um, a, a wrecked hotel. Well, as long as they don't point at us. Witnesses to a rampaging creature. So you, uh, or what are you doing with the notebooks? Are you, are you going to leave them in the green box? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you 
you leave everything where you're supposed to and then do as you normally do after a Delta Green mission where you uh, kind of uh, head back to your uh, original rendezvous points and then go off your separate ways. Uh, for any that who uh, continue to kind of watch the situation, you see an article in a uh, newspaper a couple days later about the apartment and how there was a fire that destroyed the uh, uh, the apartment of a uh, Benjamin Hale. Uh, he is missing, presumed killed in the uh, in the fire. For the post office, uh, there is an expose about how uh, Harold Nixon uh, went uh, crazy uh, and shot up the post office as well as a number of police officers that were there and then uh, set off an explosive inside the post office. So everything seems to be neatly covered up uh, for the time being. Okay. Now, is there, uh, I'd like to just find out uh, whomever is doing the uh, wreckage cleanup of the post office. Uh, I'd like to keep trying to get a contact in uh, whoever that contractor is and try and contact them uh, to see if maybe the wooden uh, Rasputin thing, maybe it appeared after the huge explosion and it could still be sitting in the rubble of the post office, I thought. <clears throat> so you're able to find uh, that that contact or who's doing the contract and you're able to talk to some of the, the guys doing the cleanup uh, and they say that they basically found, you know, nothing like that. I mean, everything was pretty much destroyed. Uh, in, in fact, you know, they say it was kind of weird, you know, they said that there were these, you know, police that were shot up in, inside, but, you know, we, we didn't find any, uh, anything related to that in, in the wreckage itself and any, anything related to the police. Real dangerous, Brock. Just made a connection between you and what was going on. <laughs> I am envisioning a, uh, a post credit scene, if I may, uh, sure. of, Trip club as the opening chords of Led Zeppelin's Cashmere comes on for the next dance. He raises his corona and says, Now nah, we're fucking talking. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that. Yeah. And with that, that is the end of the scenario. So, uh, what what questions did, did you guys have? Well, you other, than the, of... other than the, the, the swamp demons, what. Oh, what else was going on? What was going on in the background of the story? That, I mean, that was pretty much it. So, so uh, essentially, what had happened was uh, Benjamin Hale had ordered this uh, Russian icon from the uh, occult artifacts place, uh, Timeless Treasures, and uh, before Timeless Treasures was raided by Delta Green, and it was sent out through the mail. However, Harold Nixon was becoming very anti-government, uh, going postal, uh, as it were, mm -hmm. and had started to steal packages. Uh, and resell them on the internet. And that's why when you went to his house, you saw all these packages lying around. Yeah. Um, you, you, nobody, you know, if you would have searched a little bit uh, more, you would have found like computer receipts from sales on eBay or, or other mm -hmm. places like that of him selling other things. Well, one of the things that he stole was uh, the, the Russian icon. And the Russian icon uh, contains, it's essentially a prison for the, the Russian swamp demon uh, called a Boloshinik. Okay. And, uh, and he acts I right he accidentally activated it yeah well so the, the way that it works is the icon um, the it was, it's so old that the 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 imprisonment spell that was cast on it is starting to weaken and so the demon was kind of able to dominate Nixon and mm. in, in order for him, the, the demon to escape uh, Nixon has to kill three people. Uh, as he's uh, essentially possessed by the demon. Uh, uh, and as he kills the third person, which in this case was himself, uh, the demon then uh, appears. So what had happened was, while the one team was at Hale's house, who uh, ended up summoning a formless spawn to you know, come after you, uh, the, uh, the other team didn't make it to the post office in time for the uh, before uh, Nixon uh, he killed uh, these two poster workers and then summoned, uh, he killed himself, which in turn summoned the, the demon. Cool. Uh, the police uh, weren't there because the police had actually been uh, uh, taken by the demon and uh, pulled down into its you know, swampy uh, region or uh, dimension. If one of you had gotten pulled into there, you would have seen the bodies of the police floating around uh, in there. Um, 
What about the wetsuit? The wetsuit was just a uh, something from some other Delta Green op that has nothing to do with this. It's just kind of uh, flavor. Uh, there's actually a website called a, a Green Box Generator where you can go there and it will randomly generate elements uh, to, to put oh, yeah. into a green box. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what I did. I just went there and generated a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Quite a great, great side, by the way. I use it uh, often, too. And about the wet suit, I was thinking, like, okay, so we can run to the green box, take it out, and make an, uh, like, submerge expedition to find out the team and kill it. And, like, no, it's not a Delta Green style. <laughs> The wetsuit became an, an interesting red herring because it, you know, if the icon was brought out of a, yeah, it was totally plausible for the scenario. Yeah. yeah, I kept thinking that they were gonna, we were gonna have to dive down into one of those things. Mm. And that's what I was gonna do. I, I, right, I, well, I, I, sorry, go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, I was just gonna finish it, but go ahead if you had something to say. No, all I was gonna say was, you know, that. Uh, you know, the the whole green box is essentially just a flavor for for mm -hmm. the scenario. Um, the only thing you guys didn't see it or get didn't do in there was there is uh, one of you saw it. There was like a thermos in the refrigerator that said "Do not touch." You actually open it up. There's like a liquid in there that if you, if you touch it or do anything with it, it basically infects your body and you die within one to six weeks. Uh, well, we <laughs> saw the we saw the thermos. We know what "don't touch" means. <laughs> <laughs> Our, Tyler, uh, Tyler, real quick, the the puddles. I, I kept trying to think of a way to either, like we were sort of joking, like mop them up or seal them or close them. Did I overlook something, or was there just no way to really? Do no, that? no, there's re there's really no way to um, to uh, get around uh, that. You know, once the demon summoned, it's there. there yeah. There's really nothing you can do. You can only truly kill it with enchanted weapons. Mm -hmm. um, and to to be honest with you, the uh, what you what you did is really the only thing that you can do by putting it, its prison inside of its uh, uh, its dimension, uh, putting it in the water is a way for the only way to really make it disappear at that point. Cool. Okay. Thanks. So, so is that how it worked? Uh, that the wooden tablet now is encased in its own prison. It's like. Yeah, it's uh, one of those timey wimey things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, our players included Jeff Wilkins, Sean Little, Sean Little, Sean Little's not in this. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff Wilkins, Kurt LeBlanc, Basile Kizniak, Corey Heistad, Josh Morrow, and myself. Did I get everybody? Oh, Ken. Um, Ken, your last name just went right out of my head. Trench. Ken, Ken Trench. Trench. Uh, with Tyler Hudak as the Keeper of the Secrets. Our musical intro, Faster Does It, was written by Kevin McLeod and is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. We're currently producing four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. Uh, we provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to pop down... Boy, my mouth tonight. We provide audio versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. Patrons of our show can now enjoy recordings of our pre- and post-game conversations. Some of the funniest and most interesting stuff occurs before and after this show. If you'd like to become a patron, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We love hearing from you. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.